funny how we all sleep differently. I sleep on my side, my roommate sleeps on his back, my ex sleeps with everybody. <laughs> hey, shh. Welcome back everyone to Not Another Needless Sequel, where we talk movies and propose unnecessary prequels, sequels, reboots, and remakes. I am your host, Kane, and today I have with me my wife, Kelsey. I wish I wasn't wearing this fucking shirt. Fair enough. You will be my co-host as we discuss 2008's Forgetting Sarah Marshall. So what is the plot? Uh, Peter and Sarah have been dating for five, five and a half years, and Sarah dumps him, and in order to get over her, he goes to Hawaii, where he runs into her and her new slash old flame, and it's just about him attempting to get over her. He meets this girl, Rachel, and they have a time. This film is based on Jason Segal's experience breaking up with Linda Cardellini, as well as three other breakups with unspecified women. I know that you were excited for me to have that piece of trivia. I feel like it's been more recently that he's been talking about that in particular but it's specifically it's specifically what happens in the first scene well, where he's like naked that and getting broken up with yes but it is also in general the movie like he didn't write it just based on that one scene <laughs> But we'll, we'll come right back to that. Um, so it starts off with Peter, home alone. You see he's just fucking hanging out, wearing sweatpants, eating a mixing bowl of cereal. <laughs> he, like, gets a call from Sarah that she's coming back from some trip she was on. You know, she's like, what are you doing? He's like, just working. He's just sitting on the couch. What Is are you eating? All... Salad. And he's yeah. got his cereal. So she comes home after he's been, like, getting ready. And while he's getting ready, you, of course, see a commercial that is going over stuff about Sarah, so you kind of get a feel for who she is. She's an actress. She works on a show. Crime that's... scene. Scene of the crime. Yeah, it's sort of like CSI, Law and Order, that kind of thing. And Peter's the composer for that show. Yes. I fucking, on that show, every time they have Billy Baldwin, like, delivering a line, it's so fucking dumb, but so good. He's like, can you say cat fight? I think it's going to be hard for her to re-enter the pageant without a face yeah <laughs> those are good lines sarah gets home and he just got out of the shower and he's naked and that's what you're referring to and he's talked about where he had a situation where he thought he was gonna get laid and got naked for a girlfriend and she was actually breaking up with him <laughs> and he <laughs> recalled thinking like this is so funny i can't wait to write it down <laughs> like i mean yeah you're distraught but also i can imagine when you're like jesus this is hilarious like you don't yeah. you can't make this shit up yeah so is linda carlini velma yeah ah oh, nice yeah <laughs> all right cool I mean, you know, it's not like they have ill will towards each other. He's mentioned she was a great girlfriend. And there's no way of knowing which pieces of this. He actually specifically said the naked thing was not her. But which pieces of this apply to which things, you know, what was exaggerated, whatever. He's naked. He's She's trying to break up with him. And, like, I think it's so horrible that he's like, let me hold you. Like, no, dude, you're naked. Like, this is so cringy. And then he's holding her. And it's just so awkward and uncomfortable. And that... he sits on a leather couch, like, bare yes. balls. Yeah, and I said, what about him being naked would make her, like, not want to leave? It makes it worse. Like, yeah, I would be like, no, I'm sorry. I would definitely be like, I'm gonna go, like, can I put some clothes on? Well, she said it. She's like, why don't you go put some clothes on? God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, after she breaks up with him, we kind of get his post-breakup thing where he's at the bar with his stepbrother, and it's played by Bill Hader, and, like, he's a huge highlight of this movie for me. Yeah. Like, I absolutely every scene with him is hilarious, which, in my opinion, a lot of movies where Bill Hader's a side character, he steals the show. Like, he's so funny. So, he's at the bar with him, he's trying to pick up women, and fucking, like, his brother is judging him. He's says some shit like, me and Liz don't really hang out of places like this. Why'd you bring me here? I'm probably getting herpes. And... Just sitting here. Yeah. Just, he's like, I need to... I need you to talk to women with me, you know? I need to uh, be my L on some T's. Like, he's saying just the nastiest shit, and he's like, don't say that to me. Like, we don't talk. Like, you're a step stranger. Anyway, he agrees to talk to women with him, so he's going through these women. He's having one-night stands. He's fucking going to the doctor because he's like, I slept with a woman, and can you look Look at my penis in the doctor. My first thing, my, I do have a question. Of all of the awful sexual encounters, which do you think was the worst for him? So my thing about that is the girl who was very, like, monotone, quiet, just moaning in the same rhythm, and then was just like, I just came. It's, it's not so bad, you know? I mean, she came. Mm -hmm. She's having a good time, I guess. The girl who kept saying hi, I don't know if she was trying to get gagged because she's into that and didn't want to say it. But he kind of wanted to gag her. So well, like... now... <laughs> 
<laughs> but like, what's which do you think was the worst? I personally think it was the first one when he started crying. Yes. When he and started then it crying. It flashes to him like watching Project Runway and stuff. Yes. So that one definitely. Oh, Peter's day. I mean, the thing is, is after he's done having sex with her, he says, overall, I think that went really well. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. That's such a weird thing to say. Yeah, he started crying. She's like, you were already weird, but I think I'm just going to go. Yeah, she was like, well, I mean, really, this entire thing was weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, that was her decision. I think that was the worst. It was also, and of course, I want to mention, I guess, we watched the uncut version, so there's additional scenes and some of this is actually that that we're talking about and there was another woman he slept with who was speaking com just spanish that i guess he didn't mm -hmm. understand that's yeah, not so bad I mean, fucking who cares but he goes to his pediatrician i guess yeah he's sitting on like a fire truck yeah he the pediatrician says have you noticed you're sitting on a fire truck and he goes yeah this is new i like it yeah and he's <laughs> like we take we just take a look yeah will you look we at just, my penis will you take a look and he's like that's a good looking dick peep yeah so as you mentioned he's having flashbacks of sarah and it's like making him sad of like the good times and i really like the flashback sequence because it goes on through the movie where you see his idea of sarah kind of evolve and you know anyone that's been through a breakup can kind of see that where initially especially if you're the one getting broken up with you are feeling bad about it like you're imagining all the good times but as time goes on you remember the bad shit it starts to become clear and you see that evolve through the movie but you see him at work as well where he's composing for the show and he has like an episode where he freaks out and he's smacking the screen and like yelling at sarah he's at home his house is a mess he's fucking setting pictures on fire and like brian comes over and it's one of the funnier scenes when he's deleting pictures from his computer and brian's like well you're not even doing a proper delete let me get in there and he deletes it and he fucking screams. But he screams and then it pans to Hawaii after mm -hmm. that. I guess it well, pans they have to a the conversation plane, about yeah. it, about them, him going to Hawaii. Brian recommends not doing that because it's a place, I guess, Sarah always talked about. But yeah, he does, he gets on the plane and of course, fucking, you see Sarah Marshall has a commercial yeah. for the area. Hawaiian Airlines. Yeah. Fuck. I missed one of my favorite lines when Brian is trying to console Peter about this whole thing. He yes. says, me and Liz think the world of Sarah, but every time she came over, she kind of acted like a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and Peter's so upset about it. Well, he's like, Sarah's better than Liz. He's and like, he's do you like, really want to have this conversation? Yeah, he's like, that's the mother of my unborn child. Yeah. Yeah. I have no qualms with sticking you. We're I'm... not even blood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so he gets to the hotel in Hawaii where he meets Rachel, and he's trying to get a room. They're all booked, so he's not going to be able to stay there, but at the same time, Sarah walks up. Rachel, not knowing, is like, oh, people are excited, and he's like, that's my ex-girlfriend. We broke up three weeks ago. Yeah, and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry, and uh, Sarah's coming over, and he's like, is she coming? Did she see me? And Rachel's like, yep, yep, and that's when he says, I wish I wasn't wearing this fucking shirt, and she's like, fair enough. Why don't you try unbuttoning it? And he unbuttons it, and he, like, makes a face. He's like, yeah. hey. And she's like, button, button it back, back up. up. Button it back up. And <laughs> yeah. he didn't have time. I noticed that he didn't have time. And then he's like, hey, Sarah. She's like, Peter, what are you doing here? He's like, I came here to murder you. Yeah, it's so uncomfortable. Comfortable. And then she's like, no, really. And you could tell it's because she's there with some dude. Yeah, so Aldous Snow comes, and, you know, and the first fucking thing he says is something like, hey, a little sex object, and smacks her ass, like, making it so bad for Peter. Of course, Rachel sees this, and Rachel... Rachel I think kinda... it's completely messed up, though, which Rachel makes a comment about. But... Yeah, because of what happened, Rachel offers him this room that I guess she says is only for, like, the queen or... Oprah. Super rich people. Yeah, like, has to be unbelievably rich, I guess. It, it seems like someone like even Sarah Marshall wouldn't be staying there. So, he gets to stay there. He just has to, like, clean up because he's not officially a guest, whatever. And it shows him up there. He's fucking crying. Like, <laughs> he has a super nice room. He's in Hawaii, but he's just absolutely sobbing. He, like, gets a call from Rachel. She's like, yeah, I'm getting complaints of a woman crying up there. And he's like, yeah, it sounds like she's having a really hard time. Uh, I think she's on the floor above me and Rachel's like you're on the top floor he says I'll try and keep it down <laughs> yeah yeah so of course Sarah and Aldous are staying at the same hotel and he kind of like follows her at one point and he's like on the phone with Brian and Brian's yelling at him like go back to your room Peter go back to your room yeah go back to your room and he fucking puts down the phone and he's like hey he like talks to Sarah they're and Aldous out. yeah and you hear Brian on the phone no yeah what are he's you like, doing I will be in the when he gets back on the phone with Brian, 
He's like, did you enjoy that? Did you like what you saw? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, Peter has like his first day or night there. You know, you can see he's going to dinner alone. Fucking Jonah Hill's character is like judging him. He's like, you're just going to be alone? It's going to get lonely. I mean, I can get you a book or something. And he sets him up with a table. And he's like, you have the best seat in the house. You can see Aldous Snow. He's like, great. Of course, Aldous is trying to like invite him over. Sarah doesn't want that. He eventually is like at the bar getting fucking trashed. Just, uh... Well, I think something important to mention is, like, when he invites him over and he's saying something about a drink and he's like, no, I'm seven years sober and shows him his neck and then somebody proposes behind them. Yeah. It causes Peter to leave to go to the bar yes. and Sarah follows him on and is like, why are you following? Like, did you follow me here? Did you talk to my assistant? Like, she's so self-involved. Yeah. She and about her. Peter's like, it has nothing to do with you. I've just been having a hard time, you know, whatever. And he's like, but he looks like he shared a lot of needles so thank you for sleeping with him after me and like obviously we come to find out that she had been cheating on peter for a year but yeah i just thought that that part um, i mean a lot of things make sarah seem really terrible. bad yeah which she I also seems embarrassed that aldous is like proud of his sobriety like you knew that why are you well i think when you're with somebody new you feel this like need to prove to your ex that this new person is better not not for everyone but it comes up i've seen it before for, and like I think that's what it is is that Aldous sort of seems like really eccentric and weird and shit like that and she doesn't want for Peter to think like he's better than that and one thing about this movie is when it came out or when they were promoting it they hired skywriters to fly over different cities and the skywriters were putting up messages that said I hate you Sarah Marshall and those real life women named Sarah Marshall that were like getting calls from their friends like what did you do I guess they tried to like sue over it as well like it's crazy how many different sarah marshalls there were then. that's insane so peter's at the bar he's getting trashed he does like the sex in the city thing oh i'm samantha yeah i have sex with everyone he holds out that banana and looks at that guy and he's like look at this guy not us buddy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. ridiculous but he's also during this he's meeting the different people around the island that'll kind of be the side characters like you know the the guy working at that bar he meets that guy that's like on a honeymoon with his wife and having a hard time with having sex or whatever just all these people and you know rachel also comes by to like hang out with the uh, bartender uh -huh. or they're gonna go do something that follows into you know the next day he goes to like this show that's happening at the resort and matthew tries to get aldous to come up there to sing a song and aldous this sings inside of you fucking jonah hill i mean him too he's a huge highlight of the movie like his little one-liners but when he's singing he's like I just went from six to midnight and he's fucking adjusting his crotch. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Also, before he brings Aldous up onto the stage, he tries to take Peter's full plate of food away. Yes, when Peter's eating. And he's like, I'm not done. I just sat down. He's like, all right, I'll go fuck myself. Yeah, and Peter looks so confused. He's like, what? what? And Matthew just goes, mahalo, and yeah, walks away. Exactly. But then after he hears the Inside You song, he gets up to to leave runs into rachel and asks her if she wants to hang out and she's like yeah we're gonna go to this like after party luau thing you just go upstairs and change that shirt <laughs> yeah. and whenever she said that you could see the soul leave his body he, like he thought it was a nice shirt i know you could actively see his soul leave his body in that moment he was like yeah. oh so he spends the night with her they kind of are talking they go to the beach she of course has a run-in with her ex-boyfriend which leads them to go to uh, another bar and that's when he sees that there's a picture of her flashing her tits in the men's bathroom. Mm -hmm. I've never really got the appeal of that. I've seen this like come up in other shows and movies where they yeah. either have nude women by the urinal or like a video that's just straight up playing porn. Like I've never been to a place like that, but I can imagine like I'm just trying to pee. <laughs> Yeah. What's happening here? The best part of that is she signs him up for karaoke to sing a song from his Dracula musical that nobody's going to understand, and he's trying to explain yeah. that. She's like, Dracula! Yeah. Dracula! But um, would you want to see a Dracula musical based on the song he sang? Yeah, I mean, I even said to you during the movie at the end when they yeah. play the full thing, like, I would absolutely go see this. I mean, you know, it would have to be probably them. 
Yeah, like it, I agree. Do you think they stole the idea because of Dr. Acula? <laughs> I don't I'm think so. I'm just kidding. I don't think they did either. <laughs> I'd also watch a Dr. Acula from Scrubs, though. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, after that night, you know, he says, like, goodbye to her, and he tries to kiss her, and she kind of backs up, and so he's a bit confused about that, and he's kind of venting to the bartender, and the bartender tells him, you know, that was for charity, blah, blah. He doesn't believe that, which, yeah, it was totally a date. I mean, he even said to her, like awkwardly, he was like, what if we went together? What if we hung out like outside of an official hotel funk? Like it was definitely a date, but regardless, they kind of pull back from each other for the time being. And this is when you see Sarah gets a call that her show crime scene was canceled. And Aldous, you know, doesn't seem to fucking he, understand. He mentions that she should come with him on tour. And she's like, I didn't know you were going on tour. He's like, yeah, 18 month world tour. Mm -hmm. You're just an unemployed actress. You could come and be the <laughs> groupies and she took i mean he's not wrong and she took offense to that but then he was like i'll he goes she goes you didn't tell me and he's like i also don't tell women i have genital herpes because i'm not having an outbreak right there <laughs> yeah. and like that was funny but my mind went to peter and was like yeah. i feel like he would know by now yeah, if he had herpes he yeah but he definitely got lucky but i was just like oh my lord yeah. So she is upset about that. She kind of goes off to a bar by herself and Peter has a conversation with her about it, like a real conversation. She's kind of worried that she's not going to be famous anymore. She wants to move from TV to te or to film and she is just super concerned about it. But they have this moment, you know, this is kind of when he starts getting flashbacks, realizing like times were not always good and things were horrible with her. I, that's what I liked. I liked, I did say like, I like how the images of memory of Sarah evolves over the movie and showing the good times they had and how he misses her to how poorly she, he's realizing she actually treated him poorly. Yeah. And so, yeah. So after that, Peter goes to Rachel to kind of go ask her like to hang out again and or maybe she hits him up either way somehow. no he said he's gonna go on a hike and see if she wants to go and she's like yeah and Sarah sees them walk away together and is starting to get jealous yeah that dude stops them is like do you guys want to go snorkeling it's sea turtle fucking season <laughs> like it's just yeah. a random line but anyway they're going on the hike they kind of have this moment on the side of the cliff where she's like stop being afraid of shit like you know just jump and she jumps off the cliff into the water and he says, oh God, I made her kill herself because he tried to kiss, kiss her. her. Yeah. Which so. is the second time he's tried to kiss her and been turned down. Yeah. So. He finally jumps off. She kisses him. And then doesn't he like talk to Sarah at this time? No. So, I mean, Girl, yeah, it? they have that moment and he. Goes um, surfing. Yeah. He goes after that. I guess he like has the courage, but he goes back to, I didn't mention it earlier, but there's like Paul Rudd's in this as a surf instructor. Who knew? Yeah. The first time he meets him. P.O.P. You can cut that. The first time he meets Paul Rudd's character, Chuck, he's like, my name's Kunu. I changed it once I moved here. And he's like, I'm going to give you a Hawaiian name. And he just puts out his hand and he's like, P-P-O-P. And he just rolls with that. He decides to go surfing again. He wants to stand on a wave, whatever, before he leaves. And when he goes out there, he runs into Aldis. And this is when he finds out that Sarah cheated on him because Aldis says something like, you've got four years on me then. And he kind of realizes the timeline doesn't match up. He calls out Aldis about it and gets pissed. And he like goes away from him to go surf. When he finally catches a wave, he hits Aldis and they fall into the water. Aldis gets coral in his leg and he drags him to the beach and he's fucking calling Kunu over there to do something about it and Kunu's just like, yeah, he's just staring at him, like not doing a damn thing and he's yeah. like, go call the front desk. Anyway, he pulls the coral out of Aldis's leg and he passes out and fucking when Kunu comes back, he's like, you sound like you're from London <laughs> and uh, Aldis passes out as well. They wake up and they're both in the room with Sarah, which why would they let Sarah take Peter to her room yeah i don't understand like they it made no sense because i know the rooms are next to each other but how would they be like yeah this is probably fine yeah we should mention that he had to move rooms to make them next to each other which i mean people can watch the movie but yeah his room was right next door and she was like just put him here instead i don't want him to wake up alone yeah and he confronts her about and the she's fact that she's sitting she like right next to him like in 
in his lap, basically, where he's laying. Yeah, I mean, she's coming to the realization that she kind of messed up. But when he calls her out, they have this moment where Sarah kind of tries to justify her stuff. I don't agree with it. I don't think she's right. I get what they were doing with the writing. But she says, like, Peter, I guess, was maybe depressed. She just mentions, like, he seemed to not want to take care of himself. He was just spending every day wearing uh, sweatpants on the couch, not wanting to do anything ever. And she mentions, like, she talked to therapists, her mom, doctors, whatever. Anyway. I agree that, like, she's allowed to feel that way, but she shouldn't have cheated on him. She should have just ended it before she cheated. Yes, absolutely. So... It flashes to them about to go getting ready for dinner, and Aldous is wearing that see-through black shirt. And she's like, aren't you gonna wear the shirt I got you? And he's like, mm, doesn't really go with this outfit. And then she has a flashback to how Peter always wore all the ridiculous, ugly yeah. things that she bought she him. gave him like a purse and he was like this is way more convenient than my bag and like obviously it's not he had that dumbass hat on and they're at the bar and the bartender's like nice hat he's like thank you my girlfriend got it for me and the bartender's like i'm fucking with you yeah <laughs> like, exactly and so um aldous comes and asks for lipstick and she is like is crying like crying and so he wears the shirt and they're like he's making comments about it as they're walking up as they're walking up peter and rachel are there already getting a table and it's been a thing where like aldous has offered several times for them to dine with peter peter's always said no and peter kind of just says it back here he's like well if you guys want to come with us and sarah's like okay even though aldous says no and as they're walking up for this double date you think aldous is upset because this is her ex-boyfriend but he says i'm gonna have have to sit with him wearing this shirt all night yeah <laughs> like... yeah yeah but he's been inviting peter the whole time like he's totally chill with it yeah he's like friendly yeah he's more upset about the shirt yeah, so they're having this double date and, you know, Rachel's trying very hard to, like, talk to Sarah and they are talking about some movie that she did where the cell phones were killer. And it's funny because um, she actually, Kristen Bell was in a movie called Pulse that was about technology giving, like, a virus that was killing people and, like they didn't know when they wrote this scene so it's nearly like they're making fun of her <laughs> real movie. I didn't know that th I've never even heard of that movie was that straight to DVD no I mean I, I believe it came out in theaters it wasn't very good I mean, anyway it's sort of a similar premise but it's funny you know fucking Aldous is like awful film and he's uh fucking he's Peter's like, I agreeing told her that with when him. she read the script yeah, yeah they're like just relating over that anyway they have a horrible dinner because you know Aldous is being an asshole about the shirt like he spills wine on it he's like I think I've improved it She's getting mad about that. Oh, take my eyes, but not the shirt. Yeah. Rachel and Peter are, like, having a good time. And, of course, Sarah tries to make a shitty comment about Hawaii. And Rachel takes offense to that. She makes a shitty comment back about fucking, I don't know, California. Personal shoppers and... Yeah, and then she's, like, making out with Peter to piss off Sarah. Eventually, that double date ends. And that's, like, that fucking awkward scene where Peter and Rachel are having sex. And through the thin wall, Sarah hears it. And she decides to wake up Aldous to have sex and she's screaming <laughs> to try and like and make sure they it. hear. Well, yeah. this is one of my favorite lines in the movie. Aldous says, if I wanted to see you act badly, I would just watch your TV show, but I can't do that now because it's been canceled. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, my gosh. Yeah, it's fucked up. But after that, Aldous says, well, I'm going to go ahead and leave. You know, I can see you still have a thing for Peter. Like, this is fucking horrible. Sarah shit talks his tattoos and then is like, I hate your music. And he says, yeah, well, I fucked the housekeeper. <laughs> a day or two ago yeah like. they're just these petty comments you see they have a horrible relationship so peter sees aldous the next morning and aldous mentions how he's leaving and he realizes you know they broke up they talk about it and peter goes to see sarah for some reason i don't fucking get that at all i don't either if i saw my ex sad because their new relationship ended i wouldn't care at all I wouldn't even talk to them to find that out. I wouldn't even know what happened. I would just went on living my life. Yeah, me too. So he goes to see her, which I think is a mistake, and they nearly have sex. I mean, she is giving him oral, and, you know, they don't have sex because he says, like, oh, my penis doesn't want to be around What's you. What's wrong with you? After he almost has sex with Sarah <laughs> and has his dick in her mouth, he goes to tell Rachel about it. He's fucking surprised that Rachel's upset. He's like, it was only for 
for, a, you know, he tries to justify. 10 He's to like, 15 seconds. Yeah, 10 to 15 seconds max. Like, dude, stop. Stop trying to justify it. Yeah. So, you know, Rachel's like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Like, you're an asshole. He goes to that bar where there's the picture of her flashing her tits and takes the picture. And the bartender whoops his ass. I don't understand. Why was he follow? Did he follow him in the bathroom? Maybe he just had to pee. But just wait for him to leave. I know. I've never no understood. Even in the beginning when he says, like, hey, there's a picture of you flashing your tits. Do you want me to take it down? And she's like, no, he'll kill you. Why would he know? He wouldn't if you just wait till no one's in there. I know. I agree. The and thing just is, snag the picture. He beat him up and let him have the picture anyway. He didn't take it away. Maybe he ran. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he delivers the picture to Rachel as, like, a parting, like, I'm sorry, I guess. And he goes back home. He's having, like, a depressive state at home. But finally, he kind of turns that around into finally working on his musical. And as the movie's ending, you see his musical where Rachel has shown up to see the musical because he sent invitations to a, a bunch of people, including her. And then, you know, they have a meeting and they kind of talk about seeing each other again, but she comes back while he's undressing in his dressing room and they kiss. They have a moment. I don't personally think maybe she should have taken him back. Like, I get it. You want him to win because he's the good guy and all that. And he's not like an asshole through the movie. He just made a mistake, but it, it just sucks. And I agree that it sucks, but it had been long enough and it didn't seem like he had anybody else. It wasn't like he had gotten back with Sarah. I guess you're right. So, like, it had been long enough, you know, and that if she wanted to forgive him, that's her own... You're right, you're right. But I quality. I mean, I understand why she's mad, and I don't think Peter should have been so, like... Yeah. Why? And especially, there's a scene where the bartender is trying to justify it, and the bartender's like, he turned down a blowjob mid-blowjob. It's not... That's not the point. No, it's, it's not the point. It's that he, he went said, and well, did it. Well, the thing is, is that he had said something to her earlier in the day about, I just want to be with you and not Sarah, but I think the whole point was that he needed to fully get over her before he was ready for a relationship yeah and because she said you shouldn't be with anybody right now and so he shot his shot in sending her an invitation because he was finally over sarah yeah for sure but overall i mean i love this movie like it's one of the funniest movies that i've ever seen so i gave it a five out of five I did not give it a 5 out of 5, even though it was really funny. There's just certain things that, like, don't make sense. Like, Aldous is a terrible person. I think Sarah's a terrible person. I give it a 4.5. Alright. But it's still really good. Yeah. Like, it's one of, it is one of the funniest movies. Let's get ready to rumble. I hated that. Just let's, let's play, play a game. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's better. Alright, you're gonna guess the movie from your list over there. I'm gonna just tell you a quote from the movie, and and then you tell me which movie it is. I know you probably haven't seen all these. That sucks uh, for you. What's Sex Tape? It's a movie with Jason. I mean, he's in all of them. Despicable Me? Yeah. Who is he in Despicable Me? He was the bad guy ah. in the first one. Remember the guy's son, Vector? I didn't know that. Okay. Well, Let's, let's do this. Okay, number one. I do not for one second believe that that couple would still be together after five years. Oh, wait. I'm, I said, fucking, I said I'm giving you quotes from the movie. That's not what I meant. I'm giving you reviews. Okay. Reviews for the movie. So, I do not for one second believe that that couple would still be together after five years. Knocked up? Yes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's kind of fucked up thing to say. <laughs> I know. All right, the second one. Awkward phone calls are my own personal brand of horror movie. I love you, man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you remember all the fucking yeah. times that he called him. I believe this movie is the start of a cultural shift wherein society began its ultimate and soon to be final decline. The introduction of this movie's characters into the fast food, brain chemical American populace sparked something ferocious, dumb, and evil. Every time you watch this movie or one in the ever-expanding franchise, it is like taking a big gulp from a Roman lead pipe aqueduct, but worse. <laughs> is it sex tape? It's despicable me. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea. I've never seen sex tape. <laughs> This is one long iPad commercial. I'm gonna say sex tape. Did yeah. they film it on an iPad? I don't... It, it's it's something to do with their iCloud getting... i never seen it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. My review of this movie is that the emotional climax is Paul Rudd crying about money in the nicest BMW I've ever seen. <laughs> I heard this is 40. Yeah. You should have thrown a Joker in there. <sighs> You, if I do that, you'll know because you always seem to expect it, even though I've never done it. <laughs> Plus, I have to give you a list. Yeah. 
I guess I don't have to, but I think you'd do really bad. <laughs> oh, challenge accepted. Just have to pull up, like, you said Jason Siegel's and all these. Just have to pull up a list of his IMDb. Yeah, like... you'd spend 20 years. You'd be looking at shit like the first thing he was in. You're, you'd be like, is it this Game Boy commercial, maybe? <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, what's your sequel? My sequel's called Forgetting Liz. Forgetting Liz? Yeah. Gasp. Yeah, uh, Brian's wife, Liz's high school boyfriend, who her parents forbid her to ever see and, like, be with, comes back around, and she leaves Brian for this guy. I just want to clarify, we did see a baby at the end of Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and enough time has passed that the child has graduated high school and off to college, so there's no custody battle. Mm. Brian is in shambles and decides to confide in Peter this many years later because of what he did to get over Sarah. Peter's now a married man and happily living with Rachel. And after months of Brian moping around and not getting out of bed, Peter convinces Brian to do what he did and get out of town to clear his mind and try and move on. Brian decides he's going to go to Hawaii because of Peter's luck there so many years ago and getting over Sarah. Peter and Rachel decide to return to Turtle Bay where they met many years before and see all the old friends. So... While there, Brian is working on moving on, and Rachel and Peter see old faces all having a great time. Peter's asleep one night. Brian tries to kiss Rachel after Rachel tries to comfort him, and she gets angry and tells Peter about it. Peter goes off on Brian about it um, and decides that he's done speaking with him for the time being. As Peter and Rachel continue to have a good time, Brian meets a woman and, deci and decides to have her meet Peter because he feels like he's finally moving on. But who is the woman, you ask? It's Sarah Marshall. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sarah has now started to work at the hotel after her failed acting oh career. God. And she moved to Hawaii because she loved Hawaii so much to work at the resort. Are you telling me Animal Instinct didn't take off? Animal Instinct did not take <laughs> off. What a terrible, terrible. Okay. So, Brian and Sarah are getting along great, and Peter shows to not be jealous at all. It just shows how far he's come. I think that there should be flashbacks about how, like, him and Rachel's life had been over the 18 years. Like, good times, hard times, but regardless, like, they were still together. I think the flashbacks was an important part of forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Anyways, Peter shows he doesn't care and he isn't happy. Sarah gets upset. Because it come to find out she's been pretending to like Brian because she wants Peter. Oh, wow. Yeah, as Sarah is going to try and break Peter and Rachel up, Brian decides to intervene and calls her the devil again. <laughs> is, that's an important point there. That's an important point. Sure You're the not... devil! <laughs> yeah. Brian apologizes and they all make up. They return home and um, to help Brian cope, Peter and Brian write another puppet show play together. Well, and put it on for. I love know, it and hate becoming it. Becoming successful. Yeah, it's very Because cliche. it breaks my heart that you would do that to Bill Hader, but the fact that he's a returning main character, I love it. Yeah, he has an even bigger role than. Yeah, that's what I love about it. And I hate Sarah being back and evil. But she was evil in the first one. Well. <laughs> There was a spinoff, Get Him to the Greek, which I think is highly underrated because it pales to this movie, but I think it's so fucking good. It has one of his favorite songs of all time in it, everyone. Yes, Fingers, it Beans, and Mash. It sure does. So mine is a sort of spinoff of sorts as well, I guess. I mean, it's a sequel, but I called it Forgiving Sarah Marshall. Oh my god. So <laughs> Sarah Marshall is successful in her new show, Animal Instincts. First off, the fact that you think that she could be successful in that show okay, is showing well, that you're, the, you're the lost to reality. The other show was successful. Burly, it got canceled. <sighs> Sarah Marshall is successful in her new show, Animal Instincts, and life seems to be going well. But she has not been in a stable relationship since Peter and desires a relationship. Sarah goes on blind dates and even tries to hit on her Animal Instincts co-star, Jason Bateman. But all of these options go very wrong. You see a peek into Sarah's everyday life, including friends and family, and you can see how they make her feel bad about her life as a TV actor cheating on Peter and not being in a relationship. Sarah agrees to sign up for a Bachelorette-style show starring her and filled with several men and women looking to win the prize, Sarah Marshall. Throughout the show, Sarah tries to make every relationship work, but it's going poorly. While on set, she befriends the director, played by Jonah Hill, which I thought was important to bring him back as a third different character, because, you know, he's somebody else and get him to the Greek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the director, played by Jonah Hill, who can see her struggling and feels her pain as someone who had similar struggles. Through several talks, Sarah realizes what she must do and disappears on the final day of filming. Sarah confronts her family and friends and quits her TV show. Sarah decides to write her own film to star in and asks her friends, or her friend 
played by Jonah Hill, to direct, ultimately finding her own purpose as a writer slash actor and realizing she does not need to be in a relationship to be complete. So I know you hate Sarah, but obviously with the title, what I'm looking for is to kind of show a side of what made her the way she is, you know, which, like I said, you'd see her friends and family being very negative and berating her for everything. And ultimately, the point would be that she is not in a relationship and she mentioned in this movie that she wanted to move into film and this was her way into film and you may not fully ever forgive her but you can see where she's improving i hated it <laughs> great <laughs> not that bad mine was i'll for just sure go fuck better. myself yeah exactly Mahalo. mine was for sure better everyone we all know things no, i don't think so yours didn't even have jonah hill in it so <laughs> i said old characters i didn't say everyone well it's not for you to decide is it it's not for me to determine thank you for making it this far we hope you enjoyed if you were able and willing please share a show with someone leave us a review and come back for more next week if you'd like to vote on whose sequel idea was the best come Hi. by our youtube channel for the polls or let us know your idea with a comment <laughs> tweet or you can reach us at needless at gmail.com links as always will be wherever you are listening all right be easy everyone we will see you next week bye